You want to expand the intro? Everybody's there. Okay, we're back. Uh, okay, going back to explaining about the, um, this is the live demonstration of the um, uh, cam clock. Uh, this is set up for my normal operation at home. Uh, and the way you can, uh, well, when you first start the program, uh, there's a setup screen which allows you to set up your call sign and uh, your location and, uh, and all that. But this is already started again already. But so if you want to change any of the settings on here, there's this little padlock which I think you can see if you follow my uh, my little cursor and you click on that and you can unlock the screen, unlock and then click OK. And now you can go in any of these panels or any of these settings here and change things. So if I want to change, for exa example, this is my home location, DE, which is CM98. And you can see that's shown by a little orange circle right here. This is where I am. And the DX is, a, it, I have it set for my Puerto Rico location, which is FK68. If I want to change that, I can go ahead and click in this box and put in any other grid that I want. For example, if I want, what I did when I was operating, uh, the IARU contest, I had JO10, which is uh, in Belgium, I believe. And uh, hit OK. And see what that does is it moves the, uh, the green circle right over to Belgium. And then it sh and it's uh, going to be showing, changes the setting here for the VOACAP, which is the Voice of America Coverage Analysis Program. And it's showing me now which are the best bands for that particular cap here from from um, the uh, from California. And then that hump is the gray line. Yeah, the gray line is this line here. What you're seeing here on the map, it's the uh, it's the uh, terminator, which is between the daylight part of the world and uh, the nighttime part of the world. What you're seeing here, the hump is uh, on this curve. It's showing uh, at this time of the day, which is like. 1900 or 2000 UTC, that's when you got the highest frequency because that's the 10 meter band up here. Mm -hmm. It's organized. The top is 10 meter band, and the bottom line here is 80 meter band. So it's just showing how propagation uh, progresses across the different frequencies as time goes through the day. Uh, the other thing here is live spots. Um, yeah, the live spots. You click in that live spots box and you get this box here, which I know it's hard for you to see here, but those at home that are looking at the big screen can see that you have a selection of going to the reverse beacon network, PSK reporter, or whisper. Well, during uh, the uh, contest, I chose PSK reporter because PSK reporter gets all of those spots from FTA and all the other modes that go up there. And so it's going to give you the largest number of contacts up from anywhere in the world. And uh, then I set it for DE. So this is going to get all of the PSK spots in my grid square. And uh, I'm, since I'm, I'm not actually having anything that's set up to go up to PSK Reporter from my particular call, I'll say choose the grid here. I'm going to click on this grid. Now, what that is, it's going to take all of the PSK reporter spots that are going to CM98, and it's going to display them here on this map. And uh, it's going to do for everything that's come in for the last hour, which should be pretty large. So if I click OK, it's going to up, update that. And look at that. OK, now these are all of the bands. Uh, it's 160 through 10 meters. And way, way too many because the entire map is absolutely overwhelmed. So I can go back here and I can specify just the last 15 minutes. And that's going to be a little less. And click that and it should up update. And still there's a lot there. Okay, I can just cut down the number of bands then. And I can unclick all of these 160, 80s. Um, 60, 40 meters, uh, 30. For example, I just want to leave 20 meters. And it's going to still have a lot of activity there. So I just unclicked everything except for 20 meter spots. 
I'm going to click OK, and now it's going to update. And let's see. Yeah, yeah. FT8 is always uh, very accurate. It's taking time to update. Okay, yeah, it cut down quite a bit. But you can see there's still a lot of spots coming in from Europe. So you know that 20 meters is great for Europe right now. Uh, also South America. And there's a few spots going into Japan. And uh, we've got one spot here from Australia. Mm. So uh, that's uh, what you can do. There's the, all different ways that you can um, customize this. Yeah, so yeah. now I selected 40 meters and 20 meters. And uh, looks like there's really nothing coming in on 40 meters yet. Zero, but there's 594 spots on 20 meters. Wow. So this is, uh, I was using this constantly during the contest, and it was giving me a good idea of uh, where the frequencies were, what, where the bands were open to what part of the world, so I could kind of focus my, uh, my operating uh, frequencies into uh, where I wanted to contact. So there's a lot of other features on here. Uh, like here, th I just have the uh, Voice of America coverage analysis program on this particular panel. But I can set it up just to display the sunspot number, uh, the solar flux, uh, or um, uh, all kinds of things. Um, and it will actually see if I pick more than one different thing to display on here, what it's going to do is going to cycle through those different things. Here it's now showing what the weather is over here at the DX location. So 66 degrees Fahrenheit in Belgium. And uh, after about a minute or so, that will change and it will display like the solar flux and uh, anything else that I'm interested in. Hmm. But um, yeah, it's, it's got a tremendous, um, a tremendous amount of utility there. So this is a free program. Um, you can download it from website, which is Clear Sky Institute, I believe. Yeah, yeah clearskyinstitute.com. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, there, there's the solar flux. It's 234 right now. Mm, nice. Yeah, 234. So you've got a really high solar flux at this moment. Okay, so... Well, um, we can. Yeah. Okay, hopefully you have some really good propagation also for the uh, the North American QSO party. And this is about the end of the uh, demonstration I have for the hand clock. There's so many other features here that it would take like hours to go through everything. And I'm going to stop the share. There's a lot of good videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. Okay. Yep. I think it is. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> kind of like magic, yeah. Not DX5, like you said, but that's different. You know, it tells you what the DX station is, where it is. This it is just tells you what everybody else is doing now. Carol, do you enjoy broadcasting to me a lot of good things? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's telling you a trend, but right now with the the way that the solar activity is fluctuating tremendously with these solar flares, or, uh, coronal mass ejections. Uh, when those things happen, that information is near to a robot because that's just a trend of historical data over the last few decades. So you really need to have a, something that gives you information about what's happening right at the moment, and, right. and that's what the, the live spots really help you do. Well, you can have a flare, and it really can just go the way. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. You see flaring all the time. Mm -hmm. Just like Bob and I.
So Kevin's thinking the majority of your contacts were digital. Actually, they were CW, weren't they? No, they're all CW. I mean, well, CW, what I did. You did yeah. CW, I don't know. Yeah, I only used the WSJTX uh, for, uh, uh, for doing the whisper uh, evaluation of the bands before the contest. Not I'm going to say no, all the contacts. Digital stuff is for information. Yeah, that's what I did. Although some people like to do FT8 contests, right. they can do it that that's way. Too. Say, you can do it. You could hear us part of the time. Well, I did CW. Funny. One of the good reasons I did a lot of CW was because um, uh, the uh, condo where uh, my apartment is has like over 400 units, and uh, each of those units has an air conditioner. That uh, that uh, puts out a lot of RF noise, so uh, it, it's this um, it's a new type of air conditioning uh, technology that's called an inverter, not a DC to AC inverter, but an an air conditioning inverter, which uh, it's it's a it's a new technology that's supposed to be highly more efficient. Yeah, that's what it's for, right? Energy efficiency. High it's efficiency. It's pretty new because. New. The last what, five years or less? And they all use these ECU motors, is the electrically commutated motors that have a built in uh, switching power supply. And these things put out a tremendous amount of hash. So, on pretty much a lot of the HF bands that I listen to with my station up there, I have a, a, a noise floor of like S7. And what that does is it makes voice operating really bad. Yeah. But when I get on CW, I could narrow. Could yeah. I could narrow the band band pass filters so tight that the CW comes through just fine. It's amazing, isn't it? Exactly. So I restrict. I pretty much restrict my operating to CW. It works okay also with FT8, but I really love CW. That's my passion. That's why I belong to this club. And uh, so it works excellently, and that's, that's how I can make so many contacts. So, uh, that's a story. So it's, it's worse than your air conditioning? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I have so many. pretty good now that you worked it over. Mine is a lot better, but I've got like 400 neighbors, and there's no way I can do anything with all of those units that are all surrounded by. But your own are pretty close now. You can tell every time somebody got in my air conditioning. Well, they're, they're all provided by the uh, by the management, so they're all like that. Yeah. The air conditioners are provided by management. Generally, yeah, because these are timeshare units. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, okay. You're talking about it. You're talking about Puerto Rico. You're talking about Puerto Rico. You're talking about Puerto Rico. I was thinking about the citrus heights. That's another thing. You know, for people who live around here, you know, so many of the California homes where we are have postage. Stamp size backyards, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and we're just Chicago, councils are so Texas, close together yeah, that we, big Chicago, you're, yeah, you're going to have a lot of neighbors this, within uh, uh, within the new field of your new antenna. Yeah, so it was about a week ago that I went over to um, Neil's home. He asked me to help him to track down his source of uh, interference. And we went with this little handheld receiver, and we tracked it pretty, pretty quickly to one of the neighbors right behind him. Yeah, and uh, the, the uh, infant interference was coming off solar panels on the roof of That's the house. That's another thing. Yeah. So, All right, I think we need to end this and get this uploaded because I need to send him with a computer okay. for Saturday. Okay, so that concludes the. Uh, the meeting for uh, August, thank you, and uh, hope to see more of you, if not Saturday, next, uh, next in-person meeting, September. All right. Sounds good. Yep. Take care. 7-3. Right. Bob, Bob. Right. Okay.